This question says, a manufacturer states that three out of four people prefer our product, Acme, to a competitor's product. Straight away then, as soon as I've read that first sentence, I straight away say, so the probability of it being Acme or someone liking Acme is three quarters. So P is three quarters, that means Q is a quarter. Let's continue on. To test this, a to test this claim, a researcher asks 80 people about their liking for Acme. So N is going to be 80. He's asked 80 people. So I haven't even read the whole question, and yet right now I've got an idea about the, what the question is going to be about. Assuming that the manufacturer is correct, find the probability that fewer than 53 people prefer Acme. Okay, so straight away we could use the binomial theorem. But that's going to take a seriously long time thinking about it. Fewer than 53 people. If we were to use the binomial theorem, you're going to have to work out the probability of n uh, no people liking it, one person, two people, three people, all the way up to 52 because it can't actually be 53. So let's try and use the normal distribution to help us. So if we were to use the normal distribution, we need to check to see if it's okay, see if it's valid. So we need to check to see whether NP is bigger than 5. So I actually write this, can we use the normal distribution to approximate? The examiner really likes it if you use things like that because it's, it's showing that you understand the question. So NP, is it bigger than 5? So I put N, which is what, 80, times 3 quarters, and 60, yes it is, it's bigger than 5. What about NQ? NQ must also be bigger than 5. So again, NQ gets me 20, yes. So we can, so again, it is bigger than 5, so we can use the normal distribution to approximate. And so you notice how I get a little tick, a little tick. I'm telling the reader, yeah, it agrees. Now the next sentence is important. The next sentence helps us with our further working. So actually, right, so x, um, which is according to the binomial theorem, actually write this, is approximate to my normal distribution. Notice how I've changed this, so this is now NP. So that was at 80 times 3 quarters, and this is NPQ. Okay, this is a nice little step here. You write that, you will definitely get marks in the exam for that stage. And it helps us later on in the question. So, so far, what have I done? Step one, I've found out some values at the top. I've put it down into what P is, Q is, and N is. Step two, I've checked to see whether we can use the normal distribution. We can. And step three, I've wrote, noted down what our normal, normal distribution is actually going to be. Okay, next one. So the question asks us, we want it to be few, for x to be fewer than 53. So this is our next step. We now need to do the continuity correction. So x can't actually be 53. So the first value it can be is 52, or sorry, the last value it can be is 52. Therefore, in terms of the adding the 0 0.5, then for the normal distribution, it's going to be 52.5. A common mistake there would be to be 53.5. No, it can't be, because it can't actually be 53. It must be 52, so therefore 52.5. And again, notice how I actually write continuity correction. The examiner reads it straight away. You understand continuity correction. You've given it a, an attempt. You're going to get yourself a mark. So we now need to work this out. So the probability that V is smaller than or equal to 52.5. So I draw myself a little diagram, as you can see, hopefully you can see it just there. There's my little diagram here. And I put 52.5. Notice how from our normal distribution earlier on, we know the mean is going to be 60. So I put 60 here. And 52.5 needs to be less than 52.5. So I've coloured in this area. And I've noted, what is this area? Again, I'm showing my thinking. I'm letting the examiner know what I'm doing. So my next stage is, okay, 52.5, I need to standardise this to use the table in the back of the book. So here I have put Z equals 52.5, my value, minus my uh, mean here, which is 60, uh, divided by, of course, our standard deviation, which is square root of 15. Again, watch out. Remember, in the normal distribution, this value here is the variance. To find the standard deviation, you need to square root it. So once you've done that, you get the answer of minus 1.936. And that's the chance I've probably rounded this to three decimal places. So again, I'm going to draw myself another diagram. Here's the next diagram. So I've now changed this from here because for at this stage, we were looking at V values. And now I've standardized it and looking at Z values. So of course, it's exactly the same area 
but it shows my thinking. It shows the next stage of my thinking. Okay, so we need to find this area here. Well, remember in the back of the book, we're not going to be able to find negative values of z. Well, we can solve this though, no worries. Because we can change this to working out this area. Because bearing in mind, the normal distribution, it's symmetrical. So this area here is going to be equal to this area on this side. So to work out this area, what have I done? Well, the probability of z being smaller than minus 1.936 is going to be equal to 1 minus the probability that z is the positive, oh sorry, 1 minus the probability of z being smaller than the positive 1.936. So at this stage here, I've almost in the way I've tried to flip the signs. So I've the next stage is this. I have now gone to the back of the book and I've tried to work out what z of being 1.936 is and it came out with uh, 0.9736 so it needs to be 1 minus this value which got me 0.0264 now at this stage bearing in mind we're talking about probabilities we have used approximations all over the place I would round my answer to three decimal place here I wouldn't leave it like this. I think to four decimal places you're trying to be too accurate. And this is probability. Bearing in mind at the start we were talking about three quarters a quarter. We're only being given the probability to two decimal places. I, I assume it would be wrong to write it to four decimal places. I've rounded it slightly to three decimal places. And so here is my solution. Okay, for part B. Part B of the question said this. If 1,000 researchers each question 80 people, how many of these researchers would be expected to record fewer than 53 prefer ACME results? So we have just found out that the probability of uh, someone having fewer than 53 prefer ACME is this value, 0 0.026. So in a way, to find it, our expected value, all we have to do is times that value by how many people they asked, a thousand. So having a look at this stage, hopefully you can see it on here. Notice how I didn't use my rounded version. I've used my more accurate version, slightly more accurate version of 0 0.0264 here. So 1,000 times 0 0.0264 gets me 26.4. So roughly about 26 people. Okay, this question is a standard exam question. You get asked to find out a workout probability. Then using that probability, then you have to work out an expected value. So all you have to do is get the probability you found out and times it by how many uh, trials there were. And this is, there were going to be a thousand researchers, so therefore I times it by a thousand to find my expected value. Okay, thank you very much.